a plus loss, Johannes Kepler, a German mathematician and astronomer in the 17th century, is renowned for his groundbreaking work in the field of astronomy. He is best known for the three laws of planetary motion, which he formulated based on the extensive observation and data analysis. These laws, known as Kepler's law, revolutionized our understanding of how planets move in the solar system. So now let's understand the three planetary laws given by Kepler. Kepler's first law states that each planet in our solar system moves in an elliptical orbit around the sun with the sun located at one of the two foci of the ellipse. In other words, the orbit of the planet is not perfect circle, but rather it is an elongated and oval-shaped ellipse. Let's understand few terms that are important in the Kepler's second law. An ellipse has two foci, which is a plural of focus, which are the points inside the ellipse that are not at the center. These foci are crucial in understanding the law. Major and minor axis, the longest diameter of the ellipse is called as the major axis. It runs through the center of the ellipse and connects the two foci. On the other hand, the shortest diameter of the ellipse is called as the minor axis, it is perpendicular to the major axis and also connects the two foci. Planets move in such a way that the sun is located at one of the foci. This means that the distance from the planet to the sun changes as it orbits. When it is closest to the sun, it is the distance is called as the perihelion, which is the shortest distance. And when it is farthest at a point, farthest from the sun, that distance is called as the epihelion. Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law, also known as the law of equal areas, describes the relationship between the planet and the sun during its orbit. This law states that planet sweeps an equal area in equal interval of time as it moves along in an elliptical path. In practical terms, this means that a planet travels faster when it is closer to the sun that is at perihelion, and when it is farther away from the sun, it goes slow. So in a given period of time, area swept by the planet is the same. The principle of conservation of angular momentum, this principle is a consequence of conservation of angular momentum, where a, planet's, where, where a planet's motion must adjust to ensure that it covers the same area in the same interval of time. Conservation laws are very important laws for celestial objects in the universe. Without conservation laws, all these celestial objects will not be obeying in a predictable motion as they do in the universe. Most celestial objects have orbital angular momentum and rotational angular momentum. The formula for orbital angular momentum is m into v into r, where m is the mass of the object, v is the velocity of the orbital speed of the object, and r is the radius of the orbit. When applied to celestial objects, let's imagine the Earth orbiting around the sun. Because the angular momentum is conserved, the mass of the Earth is unchanged. When Earth is closer to Earth, it sweeps out equal area in equal interval of time. Kepler's third law, also known as the law of harmonies, establishes a fundamental connection between the orbital speeds and the distance of the planet from the Sun. It can be mathematically expressed as p square is directly proportional to r cube. The law implies that the ratio of square of the orbital period of the two planets is equal to the ratio of the cube of their average distance from the sun. The speed variation explains why planets move more rapidly when near to the sun in elliptical orbits, allowing them to cover the same arc length in less time. Kepler's second law 
further refined our understanding of planetary motion and highlighted the dynamic nature of celestial orbits. <laughs>